Yeah, so this is, you know, in the line of a, uh, a guy like, we're talking about charlatans, Blake Masters, those types of folks. I also think like Josh Hawley is somebody who makes certain interesting positions uh, in foreign policy. Um, somebody has come full circle in this sort of genre, and her name is Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, I want to first play with you something that I wasn't aware of. Uh, so Tulsi, people might not know, filled in for Tucker Carlson on Fox News uh, this week, which, you know, some people were surprised at. Uh, I wasn't surprised. And I always say, like uh, like I said earlier, I thought I was the old head because, like, I remember Tulsi immediately, like, originally as an enemy. She was somebody who was trolling Barack Obama because she wasn't saying a reckless Islamic terror. More on that uh, in a second. Uh, but first, I just want to play this clip from 1998. Uh, this is about Hawaii Amendment Number Two. Each of us has the right to marry, but we don't have the absolute right to marry anyone we want. That is Mike Gabbard, that is Tulsi Gabbard's father. We don't have the absolute right to marry anyone we want. For example, I'm not allowed to marry my daughter or my son. I can't marry my sister or my brother. And I can't marry Kimo. And I can't marry my dog. This doesn't mean we don't have civil rights. Don't open the door to weird marriages. Don't let homosexuals force their values on the people of Hawaii. Vote yes on the marriage amendment. And so that is the, uh, I should have known. Uh, you know, Owen Higgins reminded me that, you know, he was aware of this uh, part of uh, Tulsi's background. I mean, I knew about like the cult stuff. And the Hindu nationalist stuff, there is a cult leader that she's with who's saying just awful, repugnant things about uh, AIDS. Uh, but it's, it's interesting to me that uh, this sort of comes in the, in the... Well, let me back up. Here's Tulsi. Uh, I also want to play this on, uh, uh, on the Obama thing. Um, because... so. She, just to address the gay, the gay marriage thing first, I guess. In 2020, when she ran for president again, she said, uh, sorry about all that. Uh, when I was in the army, I saw how bad it is that governments try to enforce their beliefs on people. So that's why I support gay people now. And she also said some stuff about you know working with uh, alongside um, gay service and lesbian service members. But again, like even that, you can kind of see where she comes into this sort of like, uh, it's, it's coming at it from a libertarian fashion, but I also just want to play for folks. And uh, I actually, I won't be able to hear this. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'll play it anyway. Uh, this is uh, uh, Tulsi on Sean ha no, not on Sean Hattie, on CNN, uh, talking about uh, how what she's really concerned about with foreign policy. This is a person who is uh, portrayed by some as like an anti-imperialist. So here's what I remember originally from Tulsi. Uh, and what is so frustrating now, as we look at the situation there, uh, our administration refuses to recognize who our enemy is. And unless and until that happens, then it's impossible to come up with a strategy to defeat that enemy. We have to recognize that this is about radical Islam. This is a as much a military war as it is an ideological war. And we've got to understand what that ideology is and challenge it, understand it so that we can. And so let's just break that down a little bit. Like this is an ideological war. We need to like think about it on those lines to get serious about it. Imagine, say, uh, Catholic Ireland versus Protestant Ireland. Is that really the best way to think about Northern Ireland? You know, let's get deep down into the mm -hmm. ideologies here, see what was making, or is maybe the colonial history, <laughs> or maybe those sorts of things, maybe a little bit more explanatory, right? So this is posturing a seriousness, but it is just a reactionary, uh, like Hawk. And, you know, she's probably, she's, we, know, we know she said some good things about drones and about forever war. And but I will say, like, I think you can scan a lot of that stuff and see somebody who's less concerned that there's war and more about like how there's war. Mm. And I, I think that that's that's an important point. I know that's something we brought up a lot on TMBS, too. And like 
I just want to say about her family stuff, like I'm totally sympathetic um, to somebody who might want to make the argument that, um, you know, oh, well, you know, your child and your family sort of pushing these things on you. I, I 100% uh, recognize that. And I think that's a very valid point. But then what matters is what you do with the rest of your life when you are an adult and you have the decision and the ability to make different kinds of choices. And the point of bringing that up is not so much to say, oh, well, she's tainted from the get go. It's actually to say, look, here's where she's, you know, coming from. And did she do a lot later in her life to try to rectify that? It seemed when it was very politically um, advantageous to her, she started to switch gears on that, you know. Um, it had a little bit less to do with her sort of coming to different conclusions and, you know, the water flowing a different way. Exactly right. I mean, here's how uh, uh, CNN put it. During her run for state legislature in 2002, Gabbard told the Honolulu Star Bulletin, working with my father, Mike Gabbard, and others to pass a constitutional amendment to protect traditional marriage, I learned that the real leaders are willing to make personal sacrifice for the common good. I'll bring that attitude of public service. So she ran on this. Right. This was, you know, it's one thing to like come from a bigoted uh, or like traditionally conservative household. Like I know plenty of people like the, that's a family that I come from, very, very Catholic, religious, um, but they weren't politicians. Like that, right. Like that is a, that's a, that's a slight difference. Right. Like your house. And, and so she, she says, this, I grew up in a very conservative household. Uh, multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-faith, also political. And when you are a politician, that stuff, I think, really matters, especially and when you run that. So diverse in our makeup and diverse in our views, and I held views growing up that I no longer hold. Citing her deployment overseas, Gabbard says again, she saw the destructive effect of having governments who act as moral arbiters for their people. Now that, that brings me to what she's been doing recently which is standing up for DeSantis and the don't get, say gay stuff. Because you could very easily, uh, you know, say that, I, I mean, she is saying that that's what the government's doing. You're trying to force uh, uh, your, she, what she was saying back in the day, she's saying homosexual extremists. She apologized for that language because you can't say that in 2022 anymore. But this is what she was doing just, I mean, uh, April, to, uh, April 19th. Uh, on Sean Hannity's program in response to the Don't Say Gay stuff. This is, you know, one of her early auditions. If I'm hearing you correctly, I hear that you support the bill in Florida, the Parents' Rights Bill. Um, and this idea, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what, where this imperative came from to teach kindergartners and first and second and third graders about sexuality at all or transgenderism at all um, and it seems that you take a sensible point of view that you support the parents rights to raise their kids the way the way they see fit i agree with you but i think you are at great odds with your own party on this but i think you're in the majority with the american people so how does that impact the election Yes, yeah, Sean, you know, I, I'm not a political pundit, but I can say very clearly, yes, I support that bill uh, that passed in Florida, and I think, frankly, it probably didn't go far enough. Um, you know, it's stopping at third grade. It, it should have, frankly, gone, gone farther. Uh, but this is not a so partisan issue. This is about to? challenging, the, I mean, I don't know, a 12th grade? That's, how, how, that's do you, how do you I think determine it be, this? While kids are... Exactly. Let the parents take care of it. Now, they, schools can offer after-school opt-in sexuality classes if they want, and parents can opt in if they're uncomfortable, right? Would that be fair? I think that's fair, but, but look at education. I think you're going to the, the core point here is what is the role of government? What is the role of, of these schools? It's to teach reading, writing, civics, the Constitution, Bill of Rights, uh, math, actually raise the literacy rate in our kids. Schools and the government should not be getting in the way of parents well, raising their kids and imparting their values to them. I First of all, when she when she says she's not a pundit, she's something worse. She's a fucking politician and a climber, right? So like no honor there. Um, second of all, you know, I, I I definitely agree that like there needs to be a role in a democracy for you know, conversations about how we're educating, you know, our children. Um, but the the argument that she's making there is the most conservative one, right? Um, which is that, 
it is like it, it begins and ends with the family. It's like, no, that's why we have social schools instead of, you know, home schools is so that we're all sort of being educated and enculturated and understanding in a certain society that we're all creating together. Right. Um, I don't think there's no place for saying, you know, I, I think it's very important, actually, um, you know, that, that we have a lot of opening and democracy for people to be able to influence these things. But you can see where she's going there. It's not um, about, you know, having like a, a fair conversation about these kind of things. It's actually top down kind of mandates the complete opposite of uh, what, um, you know, she, you know, portrays that her argument is. Yeah, I mean, th it is, this is an extremely right wing position. And, and, I, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about groomers and the right wing Jack Soviet, Cernovich libs of TikTok, Kali and teachers groomers. Let's be very clear about one thing. That the people that uh, have the position that Tulsi Gabbard has are the ones who are delivering for groomers. Uh, I'm going to share this article from uh, uh, the Council of Europe. Uh, and, you know, you, like, if you want to go with Tulsi Gabbard, Marjorie Chetrin over the Council of Europe, uh, you know, that's fine. You can do that. I'm going to be here for the other, other people that make it clear that that's what you're doing. Uh, I have this article here, Comprehensive Sexual uh, Education Protects Children and Helps Build a Safer, Inclusive Society. Let's go to that paragraph here. In 2019, a draft bill labeled Stop Pedophilia was put forward in the Polish Parliament by a group of citizens. It envisages the introduction of harsh penalties, including possible imprisonment for anyone acting in the educational context or on school premises who propagate or approves the undertaking by a minor of sexual intercourse or any other sexual act. I expect uh, this is a letter um, from uh, a letter to, from somebody. I express serious concern that the bill may be used to effectively criminalize the provision of sexuality education to school children. Most recently, the president of Poland, running for a second term, made a, a campaign pledge to essentially forbid schools from teaching LGBT issues in sexuality education classes. Uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. It's time to set the record. Straight UNESCO has spelled out the aims of sexuality education as teaching and learning about the uh, emotional, psychological aspects, blah, blah, blah. Uh, contrary, uh, uh, okay, where's the thing I want to say? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, teaching and learning about emotional, physical, and social aspects of sexuality. It aims to equip children and young people with knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values to empower them to realize health, well being, and dignity. Um, and I'm looking for, there is a, a, a I, I'll link to this. But basically, the idea is simple. Knowledge is power. And knowing this stuff and what's appropriate actually guards you against people who are trying to prey on you. And so the earlier, like, I, and you can look up the experts, yeah, right? Um, this stuff is actually important to give to kids outside. And when you say, no, that's just the parents, what you're doing is putting, especially kids that live in uh, situations where they are preyed upon and religious fundamentalists, like we know that that religious households have a lot of this going on precisely because of this. And you have to have, like, you have to defend the state's uh, ability to educate kids uh, about this stuff because otherwise they won't have any other sources. And, you know, um, I know you've, you've linked to this, um, but <clears throat> up in uh, Keller, Texas, just a little bit north of Cowtown, uh, Fort Worth, um, there has now been a decision to basically uh, ban and pull off the library shelves all of the books that have been challenged regardless of whether or not um, they have been you know cleared um, you know through the democratic process of deciding which books are appropriate for uh, for teenagers and, and young kids right it's, it's just like if you want to talk about um, what's happening in schools right now it's complete nonsense to sit here and say there's been this kind of radicalization of, of students going on through teachers when in fact it has actually been this um, very, very well organized right wing movement to completely eradicate um, a vast majority of, of parts of our history, parts of our literature, parts of our culture from even being discussed in school because of their own bizarre personal beliefs. Right. So it's not a question even about you know, an individual family making decisions for their own kids because they're making that decision for everyone else's fucking kids too right now. And that's what is actually happening in school districts across this country, particularly um, in red states. Yeah, and I have that. I mean, contrary to what the research carried out at national and international levels, it demonstrated the benefits of comprehensive sexuality education, including delayed sexual initiation, reduced risk-taking, increased use of contraception, and improved attitudes to sexual and reproductive health. 
I mean, that's where we're at. And you see, we're seeing a modern, like basically equivalent of book burnings where you have just parents get it, taking lists from these like sort of uh, like libs of TikTok and all these other places to go to their school board and say, hey, the librarian's got to remove this stuff. And the, the fundamental subtext of that message is for anyone who, any child who thinks they might be gay and realizing that when they're a teenager, which uh, I'm not gay myself, uh, but I, I take it a lot of people starting to have like sort of uh, concerns about that age, saying that's a problem that's actually not allowed for discussion. And uh, like that, I mean, I shouldn't need to spell it out any further than that.